Hi, guys. It, it is still July 30, 2021. The idiocy in our country, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, idiocracy. If you haven't seen it, watch it. You'll just feel like, you know, you're living two hours of being an American in the United States of America. Okay, this is the Surgeon General. Vaccinated parents should wear masks at home. Uh, for example, if you happen to have a lot of interaction with folks who are unvaccinated, let's say you're a parent like me who has young children at home who are not vaccinated, that's a circumstance where being extra cautious and wearing that mask, uh, even if you're fully vaccinated, uh, wearing, it, wearing it outdoor, outside when you're in indoor public locations is an extra step to protecting those at home. I, uh, for example, if... What did he say? Where it... Where... Let's listen to that again. You happen to have a lot of interaction with folks who are unvaccinated. Let's say you're a parent like me who has young children at home who are not vaccinated. That's a circumstance where being extra cautious and wearing that mask, uh, even if you're fully vaccinated, uh, wearing it, wearing it out, go outside when you're in indoor public locations is an extra step to protecting those at home. I, uh, for example, if you happen to have a... What he is saying is that the vaccination... Uh, what can I say on YouTube? Um, what he is saying is the vaccinated can spread COVID. Okay. Um, well, these vaccines, didn't they come out and say they were like 99% effective or the efficacy rate was, oh, it was in the 90s. Okay. So what's going on here? But if you're, oh, okay, wait. So if you're around unvaccinated people, even though you're vaccinated, you need to put that mask back on, wear it at home to protect your young children. But if you're vaccinated, you don't have to worry, right? Oh, well, we have more strains that for some reason, I guess, mm, the vaccine doesn't work with those strains or not. I'm just trying to figure out oh, what the experts are telling us. But I guess Nancy Pelosi, as we know, she makes these rules as House Speaker, and then she goes about violating her own rules. Well, here she is. But she's with young children. It's a photo op, I guess. Well, look at it. Can we take off our masks yeah, for the photo op? we go and she's right next to young children so I guess she's got to get caught up with her uh, Surgeon General you know what he said uh, do have you noticed that our quote-unquote leaders very often seem not too concerned about getting the virus or transmitting the virus you know Nancy Pelosi she goes to get her hair cut when no, everybody else, you have to stay home. You can't get your hair cut. She goes, eh, I'll get my hair done. Oh, man. Well, listen, okay. <laughs> it's still a question if the federal government can mandate the whole country. I don't know that yet. Why not um, push for vaccine mandates in states, private companies, schools? Do you want to see those entities pass vaccine mandates? Well, I, I'd like to see them continue to move in that direction. And that's why I'm, I pointed out. I had asked the Justice Department to determine whether that is they're able to do that legally. And they can. Local communities can do that. Local businesses can do that. It's still a question whether the federal government can mandate the whole country. I don't know that yet. 18 months in, 
and you don't know that yet. Well, push comes to shove, there will be a mandate. There will be a mandate. Listen to this. I apologize. I apologize. If you are fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. And it seems. I have to say, if you're fully vaccinated in an area where we do not have. Well, let me clarify. In May, you made it sound like a vaccine was the ticket to losing the mask forever. And it, that, that is true at the time, because I thought there were people who were going to understand that getting vaccinated made a gigantic difference. And what happened was, a new variant came along, they didn't get vaccinated, it was spread more rapidly, and people more people were getting sick. That's the difference. It's the unvaccinated that's spreading this new variant. Wait a second, that, that's not the case. Um, I thought, I thought, uh, let's see. What's being said? Um, breakthrough cases are on the rise among the vaccinated. Huh. Symptomatic breakthrough COVID-19 infections, rare. Really? You sure about that? Because 74% of COVID-19 cases from Massachusetts outbreak occurred in fully vaccinated people. 74%. Wow. Doesn't seem rare. Something's going on. Oh, and by the way, you know, here, it's amazing. Listen to this. That we will be guided by the science. So here's what the science tells us. And know this, the science is forever changing. On Tuesday, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, <clears throat> the CDC, announced its new mass recommendation in parts of the country where COVID cases are substantially high where people didn't get vaccinated, which they define as 50 new cases for every 100,000 people in a week. The CDC recommends you wear a mask when you're in public and indoors like work or in a grocery store. That's true for both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Why? Because even if you've been fully vaccinated and protected from severe illness from COVID-19, you could have the Delta variant in your system and spread it to someone who isn't vaccinated. We need to wear a mask to protect each other and to stop. Kind of sounds like you could spread it to anyone. I mean, how did you, well, so the vaccines don't work, apparently. Because if you're vaccinated fully, you could still have this Delta variant. The Delta variant, well, is that a whole new virus or is that part of COVID? And so these vaccines are not working. Oh, huh. well, everybody's got to wear a mask because you guys who are vaccinated could spread it to us who are unvaccinated, stay the hell away from me. You are a spreader. Uh, th th do you get how insane this is? I hope you do. I really hope you do. Up the rapid spread of this virus as we work to get more people vaccinated. And I hope all Americans who live in areas with substantial or high cases rates will follow the mass guidance that's being laid down by the CDC. I certainly will, and I have, because this is one of those areas in Washington. And in my decision, in my direction, all federal personnel and visitors to federal buildings will have to do the same thing. As I said from the beginning, a mask is not a political statement. <clears throat> it's about protecting yourself and protecting others. Masking is one defense against the spread of COVID-19. But make no mistake, vaccines are the best defense against you getting severely ill from COVID-19. 
Oh, so now it's to prevent you from getting severely ill. Um, every individual really should be taking care of that themselves, you know, like boosting your immune system. Um, how, how did it happen so fast that vaccines are the best defense? No, a strong immune system is the best defense. H how did we lose that so quickly? Huh. Well, I guess we did. All right. Um, this is such a scripted play that I, I honestly, I, I, we've lost our fellow Americans to zombiehood. The very best defense. That's why after six months of extraordinary work and effort, Today, I'm laying out additional steps we should be taking to deliver these life-saving vaccines to more Americans. <clears throat> First, we're going to provide more incentives to encourage unvaccinated Americans to get vaccinated. That starts with paid leave to get the shot. We're still hearing that people are unable to get time off from their employer to get vaccinated. Well, this is unacceptable for some time now. I've said you should be able to get the shot and still get paid. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, the federal government is fully reimbursing any small or medium-sized business that provides workers with paid time off to get vaccinated. And the check is in the mail. Don't worry. Just keep checking that mailbox. Employers, this costs you nothing. If you haven't given employees paid time off, do it now, please. Today, I'm announcing that we're taking this a step further. The federal government will now reimburse those employers to give their staffs, who give their staffs time off, not only to get themselves vaccinated, but also to get their family members vaccinated. That means employers can get reimbursed if they give parents time off with paid time, paid leave, to take their kids or their own parents to get vaccinated. So I'm calling on all employees across the country to give paid time off to get the shot or to help a family member do so. I promise you, it will cost you, the employer, nothing. You'll be reimbursed. Secondly, <clears throat> I'm announcing that we'll continue the work with, to work with states to encourage unvaccinated people to get vaccinated. In February, the grocery store chain Kroger's offered $100 to their associates if they get vaccinated. And it worked. Vaccination rates move up from 50% to 75% among their employees. States like New Mexico, Ohio, and Colorado are offering similar incentive programs that have helped increase vaccination rates. So today, I'm calling on all states and local governments to use funding they have received, including from the American Rescue Plan, to give $100 to anyone who gets fully vaccinated. I know the pain people who get vaccinated might sound unfair to folks who've gotten vaccinated already. But here's the deal. If incentives help us beat this virus, I believe we should use them. We all benefit if we can get more people vaccinated. How do we beat a virus that already has evolved with uh, several different variants and the experts are saying it will just continue to evolve with variants that apparently the vaccine, well, doesn't protect uh, those who are vaccinated from the variants. So how do you beat it? Oh, I guess it's here to stay? Huh. Begs questions, doesn't it? My fellow Americans, not you guys, I know you know. Oh. In addition to providing incentives to encourage vaccination, it's time to impose requirements on key groups to make sure they're vaccinated. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just this week, we took an important step to protect our veterans. Like many civilian hospital systems are doing, the Department of Veterans Affairs will now require 
COVID-19 vaccines for doctors and nurses and other healthcare workers who provide medical care for our veterans. We must do everything possible to protect our veterans from getting COVID when they come to get medical care they so richly earn serving their country. We owe them. Next. We owe them as they lie on the street homeless. Oh, boy, how many are killing themselves every single day? We owe them. It's kind of like that yellow ribbon that is like a magnet, and you slap it on your car. I support my troops. Yay, I'm such a good soul. Just don't have them lying on the streets near me. Since many vaccinations are required for active-duty military today, I'm asking the Defense Department to look into how and when they will add COVID-19 to the list of vaccinations our armed forces must get. Our men and women in uniform who protect this country from grave threats should be protected as much as possible from getting COVID-19. I think this is particularly important because our troops serve in places throughout the world, many where vaccination rates are low and disease is prevalent. And therefore, because we love our troops, we're going to force them into getting a vaccination. Yes, we're going to look into whether or not we can mandate that vaccine for our troops because they deserve it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Next, every federal government employee will be asked to attest to their vaccination status. Anyone who does not attest or is not vaccinated will be required to mask no matter where they work, test one or two times a week to see if they've, acqu they've acquired COVID, socially distance, and generally will not be allowed to travel for work. You won't be allowed to travel for work? What? Well, it sure does sound like a mandate. I, it, it's it's coercive, and uh, well, I guess he's going to be mandating. Uh, uh, maybe he thinks everybody who travels to work, um, they're traveling by public transportation. Is that federal? Well, okay. You won't be able to travel for work, okay? Just don't even question it. Don't even, you know, stop all common sense, please. That is no longer required in our country. You can listen to the last of this. You know, look, it... Oh, here, Greg Abbott, right? Okay, Greg Abbott. Um, but he signed an executive order, and he is going to deploy the Texas National Guard to the border and to stop the surge of illegal activity at the border and restore the rule of law. Well, he's protecting Texans from a mighty surge, but apparently a whole lot of illegal immigrants are testing positive for COVID-19. And they're just saying, hey, go on about your business in the community and we'll give you a date and you show up in court. And well, a high percentage never show up in court. But, okay, to protect Texans, uh, to protect also a lot of drugs, a lot of gang members, a lot of weapons, and COVID coming into our communities, coming into the United States, because a whole lot of these illegal immigrants are being sent all over the country. And if you don't know anything about what's happening on the border, I suggest that you look into it because, well, what was uh, the number last, last week? One week, 20,000. And a whole lot of them are young, able, young men. 
Hmm. So. Um. Well, our AG, Garland, sent a letter to Abbott threatening to sue over a newly signed executive order that aims to restrict the transportation of recently arrived migrants in the state. Garland calls the order dangerous and unlawful. How dare you stop the flood of drugs and weapons and gang members and illegals into your... How dare... It? That's dangerous. Don't you dare. We're going to sue you. After all, the federal government trumps all state laws and executive orders. I thought we were a constitutional republic. No, we're not. Mm -mm. Federal government. They have an agenda, and their job is to get it done. Get that success, our agenda, to destroy the United States. Um, how could it be possibly be dangerous or even unlawful? Because what's unlawful is our federal government deciding, hmm, we're just not going to follow immigration law anymore. To hell with it. That's, that's unlawful. Oh, okay, well. <sighs> This is amazing. Um, <clears throat> not sure. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. And it's, uh, this is twitchy, okay? Bookmark twitchy. It's really pretty uh, interesting what they capture and put on the site. What in the fresh hell is this? CNN's latest anti-scientific insanity on COVID-19 vaccines and masking constitutes gross media malpractice, but when you're a tyranny, the propagandists get to, well, uh, they get to commit gross media malpractice. They have impunity when you are a tyranny, because we are already. So CNN comes out and says, vaccination alone won't stop the rise of variants. And in fact, could push the evolution of strains that evade their protection, researchers warned. They said people need to wear masks and take other preventive steps until almost everyone is vaccinated. Did that make sense to you? Vaccination alone won't stop the rise of variants. In fact, vaccination could push the evolution of strains that evade the vaccine's protections. So everybody has to wear masks until everyone is vaccinated? But they just said vaccination alone won't stop it. And in fact, maybe contributing to the evolution of more and more variants. That doesn't make any sense, CNN. But to those who are still following you, they don't have a brain anymore. Vaccination is not enough. <laughs> it's okay. Well, um, and our president just said, Everybody has to be vaccinated so that we can end this virus. CNN is saying it's not going to work. Okay. WTF. Uh, WTF are you doing? CNN? Called helping? No. Instead of scaring the unvaccinated into vaccinating, they are scaring the vaccinated into masking. But is anybody getting wh what this says? It says the vaccine, uh, uh, vaccines don't work. That's what it says. Vaccines alone won't stop the rise of variants. 
the vaccine may very well push the evolution of strains. So everybody has to get vaccinated. So we have everyone, uh, the evolution of so many strains. I, my God. It's amazing. People really are not thinking anymore. People are not thinking anymore. People are not, they don't think. Oh my God. Well, that means we're in great danger. You know, it's, this woman made a new rule. Everyone must be masked in the House, except Nancy Pelosi. And the Speaker said it the last time. Majority Leader of the House, Denny Hoyer. Well, thank you very much. Good morning. Everyone else wearing masks because she wanted to arrest those who were not wearing masks. And the Capitol Police said, mm -mm. That goes a little too far. She, okay, photo op with children. There she is, not social distancing with those children. The variant is spreading all over the place. It's dangerous. She takes off her mask. They all do. The gross hypocrisy. Boy, it just, it, it's like... It slaps you in the face every single day. And then you have those Americans who just can't smell it. Maybe they're double masked. Breakthrough COVID cases are on the rise among the vaccinated. White House opens the door to more lockdowns. They're coming. More businesses to destroy. Unbelievable. So, yeah, symptomatic breakthrough, COVID-19. Oh, it's rare. Don't worry. But 74% of the cases in Massachusetts are fully vaccinated. Oh, well. Yeah, and here we go. But you know what? You can read on and find out why the scientists aren't so surprised. I'm sure it has something to do with the unvaccinated, I don't know, coming into their homes with... Uh, uh, and or not even just maybe breathing on the street who the hell knows that's worthy of showing a number of times uh covid updates new cdc mask guidelines rest on data showing the vaccinated may transmit virus <clears throat> new york times and then other mainstream media outlets come out and attack the new york times washington post came out saying or maybe didn't say about the 74% in Massachusetts, I think it was in Provincetown. And Provincetown has a very high vaccinated rate. Well, okay, so they're coming down with COVID-19. Uh, and I guess only a small number have been hospitalized or getting really sick. Um, Washington Post was attacked. So <laughs> mainstream media, oh my God, you know, what? They come out with these headlines and, oh Jesus, we've, we've gone against the official script. Now we're going to get attacked. And they were. <laughs> the war has changed. Delta strain equally contagious in vaccinated cases. That's why masks are a must. Interesting, isn't it? Equally contagious and vaccinated. But, but apparently, if everybody gets vaccinated, then we end the virus. Right? Isn't that what's happening here? Chris Hayes. You know, these people... Mainstream media, just, they're, 
Are they, I can't call them journalists. I don't know. What the hell are they? Jokesters. Chris Hayes, extremely stupid masking analogy, won't convince anyone to get vaccinated, but it will definitely convince them that he's a smug idiot. But not those who watch MSNBC, CNN. They'll just go along with it. Yeah. So Chris Hayes says, you're telling me I have to buckle my seatbelt even though I have airbags? Either the airbags work or the seatbelt works, but it can't be both. What? Uh, these analogies are really pretty pathetic because, first of all, seatbelts do save lives. They also kill people. That's Those statistics, you very rarely, well, you got to look for them. A whole lot of people die because they're wearing a seatbelt in an accident. So I have always been against seatbelts because, well, it's really a form of revenue for police departments. And if you want to wear a seatbelt, go ahead. For those who don't, they shouldn't have to, especially when there are airbags. So, um... Well, I'm not saying your premise is wrong, but this is a false equivalence fallacy, and you are not really helping your argument with anyone who understands that, but people who watch Chris Hayes don't understand it. So, congressional staffer snaps pictures of maskless Republican staffers playing beer pong in a horrifying display of decadent apathy. All right. The House, Republicans, it was kind of silly, but, well, they were making a point. Pelosi has now instituted that rule again. You have to wear a mask in Congress uh, and around, you know, Congress, around, on the, like outside on the property. Not the Senate. Not the Senate. <laughs> so, one, one House of Congress. You've got to wear masks. She wanting to arrest people who didn't. The Senate? No mask. Well, this guy apparently is a staffer of Don... Uh, Bayer of Virginia. It's got to be a Democrat. He caught a bunch of unmasked Republican staffers playing beer pong in the halls of Rayburn Building. He snapped pictures so he could shame them. Okay. Beer pong with water in these pictures? Let's see. Hmm. Where? Hmm. Well, it looks like there's an event, and they were given something to drink. I don't see where they're playing beer pong. But hey, just tweet it, and those who don't think will believe it. They'll just believe it. Is this supposed to be the beer pong? But where? Where? And how dare they be maskless when we have this Delta variant just spreading and spreading and spreading. My God, well, we are in trouble. So that's what people do, you know. Oh, I'm going to snap a picture. I'm going to tweet it out. And I'm going to shame them for drinking water. How dare they? I do not work in a fraternity house. Are you kidding me, Aaron? Um, you know, look, I don't see very many Republicans acting like they're still in kindergarten. I do see a lot of Democrats acting like that. But 
it doesn't seem like they have much of a moral core. They can lie through their teeth and think nothing of it. Yeah. <laughs> if you pay taxes in the United States, you are paying for this. They're drinking something. Well, two other things. There is no chance these people will clean this up. They will leave it for the custodial staff. You see those protests with the Democrats, the BLMs, the Antifas? Yeah, what do they leave behind? The climate change protests? Oof, disgusting. There are dem offices on that hall, too, with staffers who have to walk through this go home, walk through this to go home. Aerosolized virus can remain in the air for up to three hours. Well, then take the stairs, Aaron, if you're so friggin' scared. Oh. What do you do with all of this? What do you guys do with all of this? You know, it's, it's just... It's like being in a sandbox with adults and everybody's bullying one another until, you know, uh, those who are bullied finally get destroyed and just kicked out of the sandbox. 